Hi guys, I know, I know, you're very excited to see how the drawer looks like. But in this video, I will only show you what the drawer roughly looks like. We need to make the drawer smart and make it understand the user. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this video. At this point here, we want to call one more method. Let's take a look at that method. It's this one, which says set display show home enabled. It says set whether to include the application home affordance in the action bar. Home is presented as either an activity icon or logo. So in other words, we want the logo out there so that we can click on it and trigger the navigation drawer and do other things with it. So we can go here and we can simply say get support action bar dot set display. So once this is done, that pretty much completes the very, very basic steps that we need to do. If you run at this point, you're going to see a very rough navigation drawer pop out in act. As you can see here, at this point, if you swipe from left to right, there comes our drawer. Now, like I said, this is very primitive and we need to do a lot of configuration with respect to the drawer opening and hiding the other stuff and all. So let's get back to that. Now, at this point, there are two additional things that we need to program. In other words, the navigation drawer usually follows a pattern. The first time the user starts the app ever, the navigation drawer is shown. Also, it is shown only if this activity or this fragment is being created for the very first time. In other words, if you have your fragment right now, the way you do here, and if you pop out the navigation drawer, and then if you rotate the screen, you don't want the navigation drawer popping out immediately once you rotate the screen out there. So we're going to have two variables for that here. The first variable that's going to be here is called private boolean m user learned drawer. In other words, this indicates whether the user is aware of the drawer's existence or not. Now this is of course a boolean value. The same way there is another variable. The other variable indicates whether this fragment is being started for the very first time or is it actually coming back from a rotation. So that is m from saved instance state other variable created out here now let's see when we should give true and false values for these and when depending on the values for these we should show the draw so the idea behind this two variable the first variable m user learn drawer is pretty simple when the drawer is opened which is here inside on drawer open we'll be told that the drawer has opened here we'll check if this is the very first time in other words we are going to store this value m user learn drawer inside a shared preferences file and if that is already saved and we can get a value for it then we won't show the drawer otherwise we will display the drawer but for that first we need to write two methods one to write to shared preferences and one to read from it so let's create them so i've created this method called save to preferences that takes three arguments one is the context the other is the name of the preference that we want to save the third is the value of the preference which in our case is true or false of course I have kept it string here but we will see how we mingle stuff so first we want to create an object of the chat preferences object out there so the chat preferences object while creating with context dot get chat preferences is going to ask us two things one is the name of the file and the other is the mode now let's go up and create a constant that is going to represent the name of the file so here there's our test pref which is going to be the name of the file we can give that here by simply saying pref file name the mode is going to be context.mode private here so that our app is the only one that can edit or modify the shared preferences value and of course to edit it we have to say shared preferences dot edit this is going to give us an editor object and now we can directly import this object here by saying import class and then we can say editor dot put string here and we have the key and the value. The key is going to be the preference name here. The value is going to be the preference value that you see here. And of course, we can directly call editor or commit. And there is, of course, a shorter way of writing this as well using the cascading method calls. But I'm not doing that right here. Also, here in the last line, I have said editor.commit. Now, there is something I wanted to discuss about this, even though it's not quite relevant here. Let's take a look at that. It's going to take only two minutes. Now, there are two methods actually by which you can save stuff. You can have the commit and you can have this other method called apply. Now, here they have clearly said in the documentation that unlike commit, which writes its preferences out to persistent storage synchronously, in other words, when you call commit on your shared preferences, it's going to go there, it's going to do the work. 
and it's gonna return you the status whether the work was done or not. In other words, there is a waiting time involved. But apply committed changes to the memory immediately but starts in a synchronous commit. In other words, you won't be notified whether the apply method actually works successfully or not. It's asynchronous in nature and it's faster than calling commit out here. So since this is the case, I'll go back and simply replace the comment with an apply over here. Make things a bit faster. Now at the same time, since this method does not depend on any object, so we can directly make this static here. And I'm going to make another method for reading stuff, which is pretty much the same. So let me just copy paste it fast over here. So the read method, which is static here, is again pretty simple. We take the context, we take the name of the preference that we want to read, and we take a default value in case there is no previous value available and we simply return that by saying get string to preference and default value and notice the return type is string so if anything else needs to be returned or read we need to type cast and we'll take a look at that so inside our fragment navigation drawer the very first time it is actually started we want to see if there is a predefined value of m user learn drawer available in other words was the app started by the user before this so for that we're going to have an on create here and inside that we're going to try to read the value from the shared preferences that we need. Now whether it's reading the value for a preference or it is saving we need a key right. So we have to go here to the top and make a key for our m user learn drawer variable. So there's our key which is our string key user learn drawer. So inside on create we can go and can say read from preferences and of course we're going to need three arguments for this. One of them is the context, the second one is the name of the preference which in our case would be key user learn drawer. The third is going to be the default value. Let's keep it false here because we want to ensure that if there is nothing available then that means the user has never opened the drawer. Therefore there is a false over there. And of course we need to save this inside our boolean m user learn drawer and this is going to require some typecasting which is again pretty simple. since. This method read from preferences returns a string. We can use a boolean wrapper class by saying boolean dot get boolean, and this is gonna give us the string value that we need. This is a boolean of value of method here, and we can put this entire method call inside that to get the value. Also, the other variable that we need to track is this one, which indicates whether this activity or fragment is starting for the very first time or is it coming back from a rotation. Now, you guys know very well that if saved instance state is null here, that means it's being made for the very first time. But if it's not null, that means it's coming back from a rotation. So we can directly say m from saved instance state is true in this case. Okay, okay, no more dragging, no more stretching, no more fooling around. In the next video, I will show you how the navigation drawer looks like. But remember one thing, we need to add a recycler view or a list view inside it. We need to handle item clicks on that list view or recycler view. And we need to do other things like that. And hence, there's a lot of things to be done even if the navigation drawer is complete in the next video. But then, stay tuned because that's exactly what we plan to do in all our upcoming videos. If you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.